Oh, that is fun, baby. That is fun. Unfortunately, we're having to leave the lake today. Welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna head, uh, we're gonna head back home to the treehouse, and we got to get our motor fixed. So propeller, bent prop shaft. That's what we're dealing with. Bass are coming up to spawn right now. It's a beautiful time, and I bent my prop shaft getting on pad. Just dropping the boat off of fun and sun, y'all and just had them uh, look at it. They said it might be able to be fixed just by bending that back and I'm gonna have to get my prop reworked. Last time I had this happen, I had to file an insurance claim. It was like very expensive. I had a bow dark tree on uh, Ray Hubbard coming out of a creek and it tore my Yamaha lower unit apart. It was, it was bad. I mean, I barely made it back to the ramp. Okay, Silver Bullet, I'll see you soon. Be strong. We're gonna make it through this. It's gonna be at least a week is what I'm hearing now. Hopefully they get it back sooner. But, hey, let's not forget, there's other modes of transportation out there on the water. So I'm gonna be taking the kayak and going back out to the camper. We got the yak loaded up. We're gonna get some baits right now lock up the chickens and head back over to Fork. Okay, let's see how the OP survived the storm. Don't think we got any hail over here. We should be good. Oh yeah, nice and locked up. So I secured everything before I left, guys, and well, it's looking just nice and perfect. This ground down here wasn't too soft anyways, but we're back at the home base, so here's some bass boats running around. We got the yak on top, and we're gonna launch it, and we're gonna fish in this creek for the most part. We'll check the level. So we had two days overcast. I've had the refrigerator running. That's about it. You know, there's, there's a little bit of, of pull from some of the other little you know the clock and the radio and stuff like that in here but right now it says we're using 4.7 amps but there's our voltage 13.4 and we're at a hundred percent let's just make sure the fridge is working everything's cold milk is nice and nice and frosty that's really pretty amazing. I don't, I don't really know the limits of this thing yet, but it, it seems like you could park this thing out in the wilderness for a good long while, as long as you're not running any of the big things um, and you've got a few days of sunlight charged back up. I mean, phew. All right, now we gotta get this down by ourselves. Let's see how this is gonna go. Yes. If you're unloading one of these things by yourself, these are heavy, these are like 150 pounds. Got the nose down, and then I'm just gonna take the other side and pull it this way. And you're just using the angles, that way you're not having to lift the entire weight of this thing all at once. And I gotta tell you guys, versus my old rack system, I love this one. Let me show you why. The weight distribution is much better on this. It's like a, you know, cast iron grill up there. And then also, here at the back, I've got this lip that sticks out further. The old bars were up farther up here, so I don't get any rubbing right there. So anyway, I love this Rhino rack. It's, this is the first time I've used it for 
uh, loading the kayak, but it seems to be just way better than just the two bar system. Peasy. Man, it's gonna be hot today. It's been a while since I've rocked the old Hobie, but you know this is a really good kayak to to fish out of because you can use your your feet uh, while you're using both your hands for fishing. The last time I was here, focused on crappie, caught those. Ended up with about a dozen. Took those home. Uh, had a, even got a couple catfish. Then I went after bass. Still kind of funky up shallow. Seemed like. There's still a lot of fish that hadn't moved up yet. We've had a ton of rain. The only bad thing about being in the kayak is not being able to see as high. I can still stand up in this kayak, but you can't really pedal. So I'm gonna have to sit down and just focus on stumps and the little breaks and things like that. But one more thing about the kayak that I really love, especially in this situation, being on a lake that gets pounded by trolling motor uh, and electronic ping noise, this thing's quiet. It's really quiet and you can sneak into those shallow areas when, they're, when the fish are in the shallows and you can often catch fish that you wouldn't out of a boat. So that's a cool aspect of it. Let's get it in the water, let's get our rods rigged up and let's get to fishing. really does make you fish differently so as long as we don't have any wind and this is setting up pretty good for kayak fishing so what I'm gonna do tactics I'm gonna deploy here Texas rigs probably gonna be the biggest the biggest player so I've got me a, a quarter ounce Texas Texas rig I think I've got a, a three or four odd hammer hook on here I'm not sure got a got a bobber stop on it and I'm literally just gonna pick apart stuff so I'm going to get into um, little areas I think they might be spawning or might be preparing to move up to spawn. I'm going to fish those areas slow. And the good thing about the Texas rig is when I'm drifting in the kayak, I can still maintain contact on the bottom. You know, that's, that's one of the biggest challenges of kayak fishing is you're constantly moving. So you're having to fish lures that you can confidently, you know, keep in the strike zone, I guess. So moving baits are great you know throwing crank baits and spinner baits and stuff like that it's going to be harder to fish a weightless bait if you've got any kind of wind because you're going to be drifting but we got really good conditions right now we just got to watch out for any storms that come by lightning all those things you don't want dropped it. As soon as it got on the bottom, I picked it up. It's one of those things, he was just, he was moving with it. Couldn't really feel it because I'm moving in the kayak. Oh, look what I just did. I want to talk about Lucky. Ran the kayak by stump. And it happened to grab one of my nicest reels I own. Yeah, just hanging there, hanging there by a thread. So uh, we gotta, gotta whip this puppy around, get that back. Okay. I mean, just look how lucky. Wow, we jeepers. Okay, note to self. Fork is full of stumps. Might just want to lay them down so that doesn't happen again. I actually just found one on a bed, but it looks to be pretty skittish. So I totally forgot that I have a uh, I have a push pole in here that I can anchor myself with. You know, as long as I'm kind of sneaky, I might be able to get closer to these fish. But this guy just looks he looks schizo. Okay. Little boy I just doesn't want to play. Yeah, unless they're fired up. 
I'm not gonna waste too much time on them unless they're, you know, monsters. I am surprised that I can see fairly decent standing up out of this kayak. Okay, y'all, so it does appear that we have a lot of little males moving in here. I say little, you know, these are two to three pound fish mostly, but they're utilizing this gator grass a lot. So every little, uh, it's kind of cool in the kayak because I can sneak up real close to them, but every little spot that has this alligator grass, I'm looking at at least like a one pounder, but there's a lot of just two to three pound males cruising in. I see one just getting, getting nasty over there, getting aggressive. If I get in the right little pocket, I might be able to see a big one. But as of right now, I don't see any females. So I've got this, this pole right here secured down. I'm gonna make a few casts just around this gator grass and uh, see if any fish come up. Just get out a little bug. Might as well call it over. Oh yeah, he's all over it. Where's that other one? That other one's bigger than that. Alright, I'll let you go. Couldn't tell which one was eating it. It's usually the smaller one. Okay. I uh, just made a little circle coming out of the cove and I saw another male and then I saw a female that's sitting off and I threw my bandito bug in there and she peeked at it. She kind of leaned over. So I think she's catchable. I think these are fresh fish that are moving in. So what I did, this fish is, is right there and I just did a little circle around here and I planted myself just right here. And I'm just gonna feel for the bite. I don't want to get too close. These fish out here are just so spooky. But we're gonna throw the bug in there. Sheep she'll bite it. Oh, she just did a circle. I just saw her there. I can barely see at this angle. All right, I gotta pull up. I gotta be able to see. <clears throat> Oh, God, her. Her dog, she was probably about four pounds. Uh, but that was the only female I saw in there in the back of the creek. Since we got some overcast coming in, what I'm gonna do is just kind of move out. I'm gonna put a trench hog on, a black and blue trench hog, switch up my bait a little bit. And I'm gonna fish these outside edges. You know, once they get on beds, you kind of have to be able to see them, uh, at least out here on this lake. Uh, they're so pressured that you have to see what that fish is doing to be able to make the right decision to get them to react and catch the fish. But seeing that many bass swimming around up in the shallows <laughs> gets me excited. I, I know that there's gotta be some other fish that are coming in and these little secondary points ought to be um, a good spot to catch a big one. Fish on, on the hog. Offshore fish, a little trenchy. So far, two fish, nothing big, and the overcast is just coming in hard. Woo, getting to work out here, y'all. Well, one fish all the way back, one fish all the way out. Woo. Okay, guys, I got the male here. God, the female's bigger. These are the same, oh, okay, well, he was two and a half pounds. This female's much bigger. She's gonna do a slow circle. That's so crazy too, how, you know, before those fish were just not very fired up and then I come back in here and boom, they're ready to eat. Sometimes you gotta just give them a minute. About five pounds. At least four. Yes, they're both in there now. We should be good to go. That was a bad cast, but she didn't spook. Love to see that. So now he's probably not going to eat, but she might because I already already stuck him. Oh, she might eat it right here. 
Oof. She is locked. Okay. There's something about this trench hog. I really seem to be paying attention to it. There you go. She's she's back in there. She's looking. Oh, come on, eat it, girl. Eat it, girl. God, they're both looking. That's so cool. Problem is, I'm just blowing around here. Okay, he's back. He's back on the juice. He's back on the juice. She might have it. Oh my God, she had it. She took She took the trench hog. Golly. Sneaky little devil. All right, I'm gonna go bandito bug. She just had the ends. I was like, where did it go? Just had it sitting there and she took it. All right, she did not get a hook in her. Go bandito bug here. Females are just a little bit trickier, y'all. Okay. At least I'm being pretty quiet with this kayak. She might come take it again. She's got it. Got her. Oh, it's a good fish. Oh, that's a bigger fish than I thought, guys. Holy cow. Oh, baby. Oh, my gosh. Definitely bigger than five. <laughs> oh, that is fun, baby. That is fun. Woo. Did not think I was going to be getting one off the bed of a kayak. Look, she's pulling me around. Oh my gosh, what a jump. She's just pulling me around. Oh. There you go, girl. There you go, girl. Nice. Nice big female. She just moved up here on the bed. And she couldn't withstand that little bandito bug. Boom. Oh my gosh, y'all, that fish is hefty. <laughs> oh my gosh, that fish is like six and a half, maybe seven pounds. That's definitely bigger than what I was thinking. Holy cow, look at the noggin on that fish. Jeez. Got a little three aught hook. Just stuck her nicely. All right, I'm gonna give her a little water. An absolute beauty, y'all. I don't have my scale with me, but I'm gonna say that close, that fish is very close to seven. So let's let it let it back in the water, let it go do its thing, make some more babies on beautiful Lake Fork. Woo! Oh my goodness! That just shows you guys how deceptive uh, fish can be. You know, when they're on beds. I try not to I try not to get too freaked out when I see a female. It's it's hard sometimes when you see a big shadow, you're like, I don't really know how big that is. That could be that could be really huge. But uh, I thought that fish was like four and a half, maybe five. And then when it when it came at me, I was like, oh my gosh, it's wide. That's, that fish is like maybe seven pounds. So the male, he was about three pounds. It was just a really nice pair. And I came in here earlier. I couldn't. I couldn't get the. The female was not even coming into the bed. She was staying back. So it was just one of those things where both the fish were fired up. I came back later. I caught the male on accident. I was trying to let him go because she was about to eat it. But uh, since he he was not protecting the nest, uh, it actually worked out in my favor where she came in there and bit it. So did not expect to uh, to see one that good. Out of a kayak it was very challenging drifting around and i couldn't anchor up in a good spot to be able to to properly sight fish but 
what I ended up doing was just pitching in the bed and letting the kayak drift off where they couldn't see me that well and just wait for her to pick it up. I, and I just had to watch the line because it's so hard to feel. You're not very connected with your line when you're fishing out of a kayak, but awesome fish y'all. Very awesome fish to catch out of a kayak as well. So, <laughs> hey man, silver bullet down, came out with a kayak, busted, let's just call it a seven, lucky seven. And uh, I did have another one just throwing a dart around, random, random fish, about four pounds came up and bit the tail uh so it was it was a garter male garter maybe post spawn um but this is the original pocket where i started fishing and it seems like there's more fish in here than uh than i thought there were but i just can't get the ones that are cruisers to bite quarter ounce it's like the go-to bed fishing weight right there quarter ounce that's a three yacht a little bit smaller than i normally use fits just about perfect on there i usually use a little bit bigger hook when i'm uh, sight fishing there's another one over here that caught my attention almost ate my bait fully ate it and just nipped the tail oh, there's another one there's another one in this hole back here i don't think he can see me right here oh he ate it yeah he couldn't see me Yeah, now they're getting aggressive. Some of them. Come here, bud. Let's see how fresh looking you are. That, that is a very fresh fish, y'all. Just moved up on this full moon. Making a bed. And, uh, you know, part of, the, part of the big key of sight fishing and bed fishing is is not letting the fish see you so i'm kind of wondering in my kayak situation i might i might have a slight advantage i can't go very far but if i focus on uh, these little pockets here i might have a better chance at, at catching some of these fish my vantage point isn't as good i'm drifting around but i'm so quiet and normally when I'm uh, when I'm in my bass boat, I'll try to shut my electronics down if I get in a real shallow area because bass will hear that, they'll feel that, and they might not bite. The kayak's kind of cool. It's kind of cool for this. I'd say we had a good little stop in there, ladies and gentlemen. I wouldn't have gone back in there if I had my bass boat, but just because I'm restricted to where I can go, uh, it ended up working out. And there are some big fish that are moving in. The few days before the full moon, feeding activity is normally really good. And then once the full moon happens, when they're on the spawn, uh, they tend to just lock down. They get on beds. You have the opportunity to, to sight fish, uh, the fish of a lifetime, you know, if you're, if you're on the right lake. But other than that, it gets, it gets on a tough bite. I've had many days out here of just not catching them on the full moon if I can't see the fish. Okay guys, I do see another big bass, but it looks like it is, I don't know. It's in a weird mood. It's hanging around this dock though. I'm gonna say it's about five pounds. There it is right there. It's coming up to the top. Just spooked it there. It's like its bed is on the dock. Oh, that fish is on it. Eat that thing. This is a really strange bedding fish. Like it's looking at my bait. I don't know if it's on a post or what. What in the deuce is going on with this one? You looking at it? There you go. Okay, well guys, I have no idea what was just recorded or not. I'm having a lot of problems with this GoPro Hero 9, Hero 9 Black. But anyways, I just caught that fish. He just kind of wanted it sitting there right on the edge. Finally just aggravated him. Nice, healthy looking, fresh fish. Hearing thunder in the, the background, so I don't know how many more uh, casts we're gonna get to make. So I'm just gonna get this one a sniff. 
you smell a little spawny. Go back to your bed, do your thing. Be a good guardian. Okay, yeah, it looks like that f file is totally corrupt, so you guys can't see. But um, there was there was a bed right up here in this corner, and uh, that fish was up pretty shallow. But um, I went in this little pond back here, and that's the only fish I saw. You know, pockets are really key this time of year because, I mean, it kind of works out because most of the time we want to be out of the wind, but the fish really want to be out of the wind as well. You know, they don't want their eggs getting sloshed around. And there's a couple of couple of elements that, that bass need to have a successful spawn. And they actually do need some sunlight. So they'll spawn at a whatever depth is it feels comfortable for them for sunlight to, to penetrate down there. So it depends on the water clarity. They like to have like a backstop. They, they like to have some protection. So you want to look for like little little grass clumps or a log. A uh, stump, you know, they love stumps um, and a hard bottom, you know, something like shell beds, pebbles, anything like that. That's, I mean, they'll spawn on boat ramps, any kind of concrete structures, rip wrap, but it's almost never just silt because uh, the silt is, you know, they don't like it in their, their gills, first of all. You know, it'd be like breathing in dust uh, for us all the time, and uh, it's not good for their eggs. So I am seeing a lot of males. Um, doesn't mean that the, there's not females on beds around here as well. I've obviously caught one today, um, but the males usually come up first, and then the females are right behind them. So these are pretty fresh fish coming off the full moon. The skies are looking pretty dark, guys, so I think I'm going to take it back. Uh, to the camper maybe fish one more little spot if I can but uh, it's getting hard to see too it's getting real windy and overcast all right come on baby I like the bank I like it looks pretty good there's some stumps in there just looking for a feeder anybody hungry oh gosh a little over the water apologize oh no knock my skirt off Sometimes you knock your skirt off. Oh, there's one. Come here, baby. Are you a crappie? Yes, you are. Dandy. A dandy crappie, too. Goodness gracious. That's a big one. I thought I got bumped by a crappie. I might just have to come in here with the old crappie dig in the morning. Okay, now I got in on one of my favorite fish in the world. Caught a big one. Raining. Overcoming the odds. Whew, let's head on in. Oh man, there's a big fat drops. Those big fatties. This is when I'd really like to have my boat. Oh, oh goodness. Come on up here. Ah. We're a little damp, but we made it in safe, y'all. It's a little sketchy. When you got, you're in the kayak and you're holding the graphite rod and there's like thunder and lightning and you're getting rained on and you can't get back fast. Like there's no fast way to get back. But I'm glad I came out here guys. Um, you know, I needed to come out and get the, get the camper anyways. So I just thought, man, I'll get the, I'll get the yak. Just do it, do it old school. And sometimes fishing out of the kayak is is just advantageous you know it's so nice having the bass boat you have all the tools to your disposal electronics it's amazing but when the fish are up shallow anyways and you got to be stealthy the kayak can be uh, pretty cool so i was able to go find a few pockets where the bass were spawning in i wasn't able to get on a bite where uh you know they were just biting a texas rig or biting a spinner bait uh, and that usually happens um, special lakes that are highly pressured like this one uh, around that full moon you get fish that lock on beds 
uh, they're in f they're in spawn mode they're not in feeding mode um, you'll see them feed really good up before the full moon like three or four days before the full moon and then after that uh, that that week gets kind of tough but if you could see them you could definitely catch them so I was able to get them on uh, the ba I mean the bandito bug just a winner just a winner for bed fishing um, you know compact creature baits is what you want when you're bed fishing because they'll pick up the end of a worm or a, any sort of elongated creature bait so um, you know bandito bug hard to beat I, I don't necessarily throw bright uh, colors that I can see unless it's a deep bed that I know there's a fish there uh, and I'm really trying to see if a fish picks it up most of the time I'll just throw a natural color because it seems like they'll eat it better anyways but it was a good challenge trying to see the fish out of the kayak being low and then being moved around with the wind and everything like that but it was fun you guys and i caught a freaking toad we're gonna sign it off on this beautiful drizzly evening y'all let me know in the comments what your favorite springtime bass fishing bait is if you could only pick one let everybody know in the comments down below smash that like button for greatness in the outdoors and subscribe right here to the channel so you don't miss a single outdoor adventure love you guys i'll see you